What about humble? I think instead of being humble, we should be honest. We should be truthful. A lot of times you, when you, when you, people's version of humble is acting like they're not who they actually are. I remember introducing a 10 time Grammy award winning producer to one of my clients. I'm like, Hey, meet 10 time Grammy award winning producer. He was like, Oh no, no, not me, bro. I ain't all that. Nigga, you have 10 Grammy awards. What do you mean you're not all that? I didn't tell a lie at all, but you feel like you had to come back and diminish what I said. And that was what humility is or being humble is. But I think there's nothing more humble than being honest and being accurate, not under or over. Daniel Dickey, yeah, you have been described. Mr. Daniel. Oh, Excuse me. Yeah. Mr. Daniel Dickey, you've been described as a Renaissance man, one of the most accomplished black men in the world, and the creator, CEO, founder of the Resource Guild, which has done so, so much. Yeah, I don't want to take your whole spiel. Obviously, you see, I got one. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here for it. <laughs> Please, you know, just tell uh, for people who don't know. Well, uh, well, what's what's going on, people? Uh, my name is Mr. Daniel Dickey. Um, I own a award-winning brand management and strategy consulting agency called the Resource Guild. In that space, we launched um, and worked with so many different realms of excellence in our culture, from film and entertainment to alcohol to restaurants to philanthropic endeavors. And so, I spend really my time, all my time, in things that I'm passionate about. And so I'm passionate about helping our people get their stories told. I'm passionate about helping our businesses go to higher heights. I'm passionate about uh, bringing resources to um, under-resourced individuals and under-resourced communities. And I'm grateful that I get to do that with my time. Um, but then I'm also a singer-songwriter. You know, I went to college on vocal scholarship and I've travel the world and shared stages with extraordinary artists like John Legend, Jagged Edge, Carl Thomas. I did NBA All-Star Week in 2019. Um, and then I'm an active philanthropist as well. You know, we uh, served together with Big Brothers Anonymous, uh, with the Barack Obama Foundation, the Fulton County Youth Commission. And I do similar work with Jose Be the Hungry. And I consult with a lot of the top activists across the country about um, how they can enhance their digital footprint uh, and bring in more meaningful partners to where they're not spending their own money all the time for the endeavors that they're, you know, doing to support and uplift our community. It's amazing the life that you have created. How does someone get to the point where they're living their Mr. Daniel Dickey accomplishment world of just beauty, magic, and wonder and harmony? That that's, I don't know, I just get such, when you share, it's like, such visuals, such an experience in your story. Mm -hmm. So how, how does how did how does one like live that? Um, I think the first thing, honestly, is is to understand what the truth is about each of us. Like we don't derive from simple people. We derive from the people who created everything. You know, like and when they were creating everything, they still somehow found time to be connected to each other, connected to the earth, connected to the source, um, more connected to each other. They were already mothers, they were already fathers, and they still found time to create science and math and the building blocks of medicine and agriculture and music and astronomy and the nautical arts. Um, and so to know that they were able to do all those things and still do the things that we use as the excuses for doing less, it, I think that's the first thing is like, we are all Renaissance people. Like everything we do with our time, other people get paid to do, even the things we do leisurely. And so I think understanding that that to whom much is given, much is required, that scripture is very powerful and it energizes me. It gives me fuel when I feel tired, when I feel um, spent, when I feel like, you know what? I mean, I have, I don't feel like I have a lot more to give. And that scripture just gives me another new tapping into a new source because in my opinion, I think African-Americans in America are only conditioned to get to about 40% of their true capacity. I don't think most of our people are even close to what they're capable of. They work a job, maybe a job that they don't even enjoy. And then they take care of their families, some friends, responsibilities, maybe have an extracurricular activity. And then they go to sleep and then they look forward to doing that again. But that's not why we were put on this earth. You know, firstly, I believe we were put on this earth to be the answers to each other's prayers. Um, and so because I live in alignment with that, I have a karma loop that keeps good things on its way to me.
and in, and those things are in things that I have passion and things that I have purpose, but they come to me. Like I don't do any, like for our agency, we'll be celebrating 10 years in September, like just in a couple of days. Um, thank you. And so in those 10 years, we've worked with Ferrari, Maserati, Miller Coors, Hennessy, Lincoln, uh, launched Ciroc Armoretto and Ciroc Mango in the Atlanta market and all these cool things, but we never went to look for business. We've never done an RFP. We've never done any type of bidding or any of those kinds of things for business. And I think that's a, a testament to the alignment that happens when you understand and unlock the truth of who you are. And so once you do that, you unlock who you are and then you are caught up in your difficulty of building your business and the overwhelm of, of life and things. And then the people around you are in a similar place. How do, what is that next step? Do you think just the empowerment of that gives us enough to move forward if it's a different way? Um, can I rephrase that? Yeah. What's the next step after we get to know who we are? This is a huge issue. Yeah, our it is. Facts. No, definitely. Well, I mean, it's for us, I think unlearning is a key ingredient for the African American experience. We have to unlearn. Like, we were taught to be divisive with each other, we were taught to look at each other like we were um, competition. We were taught to um, focus on things that were right in front of us, never to have big vision, to have big dreams, or to believe that big vision and big dreams could be our existence and be our experience. But again, like I think when we tap into the truth, it will, and, and you live on that frequency, it will actually invite those things into your life. Like I think a lot of oh, yeah, times yeah, you yeah. talk about chasing the bag, but anything that you chase is running away from you, yeah. like literally. And so anything that you chase, if it's running away from you, then that's not something that was yours because things that are aligned with you should be on their way to you. Yes. You know okay. what I mean? So it's like yeah, the exact yeah. opposite. When you align, you won't have to hustle. You won't have to chase. Yeah. You won't have to grind. Yeah. There will be an anointing and there will be a favor and there'll be an ease that clears the path for you through things. And I think that's the next step, but it, it understanding the truth of yourself uh, and taking ownership of the truth. That's one thing to know, but it's one thing to own. Because when you own something, then you own it. You know what I mean? It's like when you own a home, you 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 make sure the grass is cut. You make sure that the, the, the upkeep of the house is, is happening because it's yours. And so it's the same thing with your gifts and your skills and your abilities. When you take ownership of them, you take care of them better and you make sure they're utilized a bit more effectively because you would never want to waste those things. Yeah. You, I definitely received that. I, you made me think of two things. One, the ownership, the other opportunity is something I've realized, the deconditioning of victimhood. Yeah. I realized that you, you have to own everything about where you're at. Yeah. And just to move forward. Like all the, the struggles mm -hmm. that you, that you kind of get some, some kind of little satisfaction out of mm -hmm. living a certain way with yeah. this responsibility. Mm -hmm. Own it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then also, uh, you know, we're at a business conference uh, and festival, um, but, you know, I have a very unpopular opinion about entrepreneurship. Do you really? Yeah, I, it's unpopular because I, I think um, I think our oppressors do such a great job with misdirection. Like, the, you know, they'll have you looking at the left hand while they're just completely screwing you over, you know, with the right hand. Like, you know what I mean? And so wherever they have you looking, probably the opposite places where you should be going. And the media is a great example. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. And so... To me, I think the African-American experience in America is an experience um, that has a lot of divisive aspects to it, a lot of low vibrational aspects to it. Um, I think we, I think we're in probably one of the more selfish times in the world. Um, I think people are, and, and, and I think it became really bad when people became unapologetic about being selfish. And to me, being selfish and selfishness it's the arch nemesis of love and purpose. What about? And so you'll never unlock either one of those. And so it's very much a byproduct of these levels of depression and these levels of suicide that we're seeing at the highest levels because you're selfish. Um, you don't feel confident in the people around you because you don't invest anything meaningful in them and they're not investing anything meaningful in you. And so then that collaborative energy that we're supposed to be on is not there. You know what I mean? And so. The, the, the other that so now it's like this whole be your own boss everyone's a boss but at the end of the day everyone is not built 
or equipped to be CEO of a company. Some people are better at the COO. Some people are better as a CMO. Some people are, are better as a team receptionist. You know what I mean? Like just everyone isn't. And so if that's the race, then you just have a bunch of people in competition and opposition with each other fighting for a piece of a piece of a piece of a piece of pie. And I just don't think that's what our ancestors envisioned for us at this point, 20, 2023, after all the struggles, after all the sacrifices for us to now be fighting with each other over a piece of a piece of a piece of pie when we make the best pies, okay? Like our people make the best everything. You know what I mean? We created pie. So why would we now be fighting for pieces of it with each other, you know? And so um, the spirit of collaboration is the key to scaling a business, growing a business. And that doesn't come from this be your own boss energy. And so we're not allowed to, now we're not building vertical companies. We're watching our oppressors and we're watching our counterparts in other ethnicities make so much money with their businesses that they can afford to leisurely fly to fucking Mars. Not like, not NASA, not nothing. I'm just me and my people are gonna build a space shuttle with our money and then we're gonna fly our friends to the moon. And we can't even take our friends to JJ's. <laughs> I'd say, say. Is that, is that distinct, the collaborative energy from making sure, like put, essentially putting your mask on so you can have someone else like taking care of your home before you go and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, but I think that, again, we don't have, we will never have authentic, authentic security within our own bandwidth. Again, we were supposed to be collaborative. We we're like, there's specific things like you're, cause I'm five foot nine and you're how tall? Uh, six feet. So you're six feet. So there's some things that you can reach that I just can't reach. And if I try to reach them on a ladder or something, I might tip over and fall and break my neck. When you can just naturally reach your six foot face ass up there and grab that thing. You know what I mean? Like, so you have things in you that I don't have. Yeah. And so when people focus on their strengths and hire and uh, collaborate on their weaknesses, will have a much more uh, mutually beneficial exchange in all aspects of life. You know what I mean? Like it's one of the things that I pride myself on in our agency is is to create win-win situations. Like I don't think anyone has to lose for me to win. You know, I don't have, no one has to, no, no one's neck has to be stepped on. No one's back has to be stabbed or any of those kinds of things for me to win because I was born to win. You know what I mean? Like every one of us, like, you know, when people deal with low self-esteem and some of those kinds of things, like I, one of the conversations that I have with people is, is about the authenticity of the reality of our existence. Um, each, they say that at the point of ejaculation, it's at, from 1.5 million to 15 million sperm were deployed. And the fact that we exist means that we beat 1.5 million to 15 million other motherfuckers. Inconceivable. Exactly. And an inconceivable amount of people we already beat. We're never going to have to beat that many people for any job, for any position, for uh, there's never going to be that many people in line. We'll never have to compete against that many people again. So theoretically, life should be a celebration because it's really the winner circle. It's really the victory lap from winning the greatest race. From victory to victory. Facts. So it's like we were born to win. Even people think they're losers. The fact that you exist means that you are a winner. Like there hasn't, in all of the Olympics that have ever happened, it hasn't been 1.5 million athletes that have competed since throughout the history of time. There hasn't been 1.5 million athletes in all of the world games ever. So you'll never have to compete like that. And so this notion that we're competing with people who are also not millionaires or billionaires in billion dollar and trillion dollar and million dollar industries, just that notion is a fool's errand. Unity, it's cliche, but it really is the answer. Yeah, and that's why it's been so, that's why it's been so programmed in opposition of. Like we can't wait to isolate. We can't wait to cut people off. We can't wait to do a lot of those it things. Yeah, exactly. But if there's 8 billion people on this earth and you can't have 200 friends, you know what I mean? You can't have 200 people that you could call on and that's literally probably 0.0075% of the world population. You don't think that that's, you, you, you don't have access to that many people that you can trust, believe in, that do the same kinds of things, think more kind of in the same realms and stuff like that as you. It's again, it's programming. It's like you said, the deconditioning. It is. Yeah. And we have to decondition our minds because we are supposed to be close. We're supposed to be connected. We're supposed to be in a more symbiotic relationship with each other as a people. 
especially as black men, because we're an endangered species and no one understands what we go through but us. But we're the people who are the worst at communicating and talking with each other. And so it really is about unlearning and anything that you feel like is your first reaction is probably a program reaction. And so now you need to move past that and think about what it means to be closer, be more connected, be more loving, be more willing to reach out and to engage and to be more vulnerable with your people. My last comment, okay. circling back to what you said, because I think it's so powerful because I really understood. You talk about frequent, when you get to know yourself, mm -hmm. you realize your, your frequency changes because exactly. you accept yourself and you see your power. And so at that point, you don't have to go out and, it, and grab things no. come to you. Yeah. But then if I raise my frequency myself as a reaction, I'm going to cause things around me to raise, which is yep. influencing other people. Exactly. And so it does all come from truly getting to know yourself, your yeah. strength, your self-acceptance, mm -hmm. and who you are. It affects. Yeah, no, those are absolutely facts. And when you get on those frequencies, it's magnetic. Like, it's it's it creates a, it, there's an aura around you. Like, it, and it causes perfect strangers to want to know you. They want to reach out to you. They want to know what you're up to. Like I'm, I'm in a room and I'm just in there to have a good time. I'm chilling. And next thing you know, people are asking me for directions. Like, hey, hey, well, am I supposed to put, I'm like, I don't work here. Man, you look like you're the boss. Like people will tell me I look like I'm the boss and I'm just here, I'm trying to I'm trying to get free drinks and meet somebody's daughter. Like I'm not in, in any official capacity at all, but I guess I look so official that people think I'm running things that I'm just here to have a good time at. Yeah. Your energy precedes. It does. Yeah, but yeah it yeah. does. But yeah, and and that and again, that frequency is one that blessings will flow to you. And when you live on that frequency, blessings not only flow to you, they flow through you to others. Like, you know, for the entire the entirety of our my agency, we've been hiring people. You know, I've been an employer of black women. I've been an employer of black men. I've been an employer of black businesses. I've constantly hired our people to do all the things that were needed to satisfy the needs of our clients whether that be photographers, videographers, bartenders, speakers, realtors, just all aspects of industry and business, I get to touch them and I get to put opportunities and put money into the pockets of my people through those things. And it puts me in a karma loop where people are always wanting to give me things, even strangers, and it's weird sometimes. And I have to, you know, I have to kind of let people know in my dating life, like, listen, sweetheart, strangers may want to give you stuff, just don't be in my way. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they, somebody, you know, somebody might send us some drinks over. Just enjoy the drink. There you go. You know what I mean? Like, somebody may pull us out of the line and say, no, 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 you no way. Y'all need to skip all that. Um, Don't do the whole, it, I'm not. No. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because, because there's a, and there's a couple of things, lastly, for me, there's a couple of words I want to cancel in our language as a people. And, um, and it's a part of my messaging these days. I want to cancel the word busy. I want to cancel the word tired and I want to cancel the word humble. Okay. And I want to cancel the word busy because in my opinion, most African-Americans never even get close to their true capacity. So if you're not even close to what you're capable of, how busy can you actually even be? And then I want to cancel the word tired because people can't help you with tired. There's nothing I can do about you being tired. You getting rest is your responsibility. Yeah. I'm, I can't, you know what I mean? Like, I can't do anything about that. I can't put energy into your body. And so I can't help you with busy if you don't cut me a check. And I can't help you with tired because I can't put rest in your body. And then I think the word humble is a word that is oppressive, in my opinion, um, because it means in a dictionary. I think we have a lot of biblical mystique around humble, but the word is defined in a dictionary as having or showing a low or modest estimate of one's own value and one's own importance. And when you look at the definition of low self-esteem, it looks very much like the definition of humble. And you know who wants us to be humble? Our oppressors. They want us to have a low estimation of our value and importance. And not only do they want us to, they programmed us to. And that's why we're in a space where our culture is something we don't own. Um, 50 years in hip hop. Yes, exactly. So we're celebrating 50 years in hip hop, excuse me. Uh -huh. We're celebrating 50 years in hip hop, but there's very few individuals who've ascended to those high levels of earnings and those kinds of things through their own labels and through their own things it was they they had to you know tap into other frequencies and other uh suppliers and resources to go into that realm 
Yeah, and that that revenue is multiplying and circulating the world. Right, exactly. And we're getting the, the and we're not getting the lion's share of it. And it's like that with everything. We make the best food. We make the best music. We make the best women. We make the best men. We make the best everything. Like the tops of everything are us, but we're not the tops of anything financial. And so it's uh, a very um, unbalanced system that we exist in. I got that. So yeah. Any final words? Yes. So cancel, busy, humble, and tired. And so, and replace them. So I replaced the word busy with the word active. It's a different responsibility. Okay. I like the, you know I, I like the solutions. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm very much a solver. Got it. And yeah. And so active gives you a different responsibility. Active requires movement. You know, I know I've, we have some, we, we have these drunk uncles and mom might ask them to cut the grass. Grandma might ask them to cut the grass. And they literally sat on the porch all day drinking beers. And when you ask them why they didn't cut the grass, they'll tell you they were busy. They won't tell you they were active. <laughs> You know what I mean? And and a lot of times when you hear people talk about being busy, they aren't in alignment with their passion and purpose. They're doing work that somebody's paying them to exchange those things for. Um, so I replaced the word busy with the word active. I replaced the word tired with the word grateful. Because whatever I spent my time doing that depleted my energy, I'm grateful I was able to do that. And that's just a different conversation because what we're not having these days, I don't think we're having authentic conversations and we see our depression numbers going higher. We see our suicide numbers going higher. And we've become so trendy in our communication. People can't wait to tell you how busy and tired they are. So if I call you when I'm struggling. And the first thing you do is tell me you're busy and tired. I'm going to then be like, you know what? I ain't going to bother you. And I could be the last I person someone, I ever talk to. I have someone very specific. Every time I ask him, he says, tired. <laughs> Yeah, literally, and literally. And, and you and that makes you downship. I, li I, I literally, I literally be like, okay. "All right, bro, I guess I'll hit you later." Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna coach them out of that. Exactly, and so that's where we are, and, and we're not having impactful, authentic, meaningful connections or authentic, meaningful conversations with each other, and our community suffering because of it. So I want people to stop telling people how busy and tired they are. Those aren't admirable, aspirational things in the first place. What about humble? I think instead of being humble, we should be honest. We should be truthful. A lot of times you, when you, when you, people's version of humble is acting like they're not who they actually are. I remember introducing a 10 time Grammy award winning producer to one of my clients. I'm like, Hey, meet 10 time Grammy award winning producer. He's like, Oh no, nah, no, nah, not me, bro. I ain't all that. They go, you have 10 fucking Grammy awards. What do you mean? Not all that. I didn't tell a lie at all, but you feel like you had to come back and diminish what I said. And that was what humility is or being humble is. But I think there's nothing more humble than being honest and being accurate, not under or over. I see. Yeah, yeah this has been wonderful. Thank you. You are a wealth of life and wisdom and knowledge. I appreciate that about you. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you sitting down and talk to me. Yes, thank you so much. Let's show some love. <laughs> Yes, all right. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Let me know what you thought in the comments. I would love to have him back. What do you guys think? Until then, check out this video that YouTube recommends you watch next.